copy paste buffer. So, uh, is someone recording? I'm recording. Oh, I've okay. just started off. Yeah. So basically, what is helping me is this app that every time I copy and paste something, it saves it, so I can pull up the list of things that I copy pasted. And that's the only thing that helps me navigate this insanity because essentially it acts as, okay, like this is relevant. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to get back to it. And then some squirrel comes in, I forget about it. And then I'm like, wait, what was that? I open this app, I see that. And then I proceed. So it's like multitasking <laughs> management in some form. Uh, I, I don't really multitask. I just open tabs. <laughs> Yeah. I kid you not, I closed my browser down the other day because it started to get a bit unwieldy. Hey, thank you. And, I, and, and I had three windows with 40 to 50 tabs on every one of them. Started to get a bit silly. I was like, I need to really cut this down. There's just too many. And I kid you not, there, there were different windows because there were different things. Yeah. One of them was the coronavirus stuff that I was like opening pages after pages trying to understand machine learning and and just like trying to get a better idea of you know look at i was just looking at so many different things and i'll go like oh i'll look at that afterwards and then one of them's like my general news shit one of them's like music music technology that sort of stuff and one of them's like design stuff and i was just like this is silly i need to i need to cut this down <laughs> there's too many things open and i'm working through this data set i've been given and it's it's only seven megabytes, but it's for uh, twenty four thousand lines of a, a spreadsheet, and it and it's been it's been really sluggish. It's yeah. not it's not liking it. Nice. Um, so it's four thirty five. We'll give just a couple more moments to see if Shannon's able to join. I'm not sure what her what her day is like. I know she's often similarly doing doing a dozen things at once, getting things moving. Um, I'll just go over quickly what my tentative agenda for this is, and if people want to let me know anything that they want to throw on, then we can just make sure that we can we can kind of run through those. Um, so, yeah, I think we're good to start actually. And okay, let's let's do. Joins. It's good. That sounds great. Um, so I loved um, Shannon and Frankie's your conversation around how we can streamline the whole orientation piece from yesterday. Um, and I think if we use something like a Google Form where we can have conditionals so that people can say like you know here's the type of talent that I that I'm bringing. Um, and it can then start channeling them to the right areas. Um, I don't know if you saw that part, Arthur, but there was some conversation around, the, around doing that, being able to do things like identify if somebody is already, you know, is, is a Slack user. So if we have someone who is, for example, a medical expert but isn't a Slack user, we can give them a different set of information around mm -hmm. the onboarding. Um, I put a link in the daily call notes for here, but we'll add it to a Trello card. Uh, we're able, and let me let me know if I'm talking too fast. By the way, too, <laughs> like we've got so much stuff to go through. Do, exactly. do, we, do we strongly want to uh, let people stay off of Slack? I think that anyone who's who's doing the machine learning and is doing project management or is doing anything like that or communications, I think we want them on Slack. I think the one difference there, or the two main ones that come to mind are anyone who's either a partner or a sponsor who we, want to, who we want to communicate with and who doesn't want to be on Slack, or anyone who's a domain expert who we're tapping into their talent, we, we should find ways, especially, I mean, yes. when I say that, I yes. mean, not necessarily a medical intern, but if we have somebody who is bringing um, high impact, light touch domain expertise to us, that then we figure out whatever channel works for them. And, and then we we'll, we'll, yes. yeah, we'll work out yeah. to come to them because right. we want to, right. want to extract all of that brain. Yeah. So I actually have a knowledge bomb ready. And I'm sorry I haven't sent it uh, before this call. I just needed some food. But basically, <laughs> I had a very nice conversation with Andrew, that visual thinker guy. Yeah, I, watched sure. that, I watched that whole talk. I really enjoyed it. But me and Andrew have been talking back and forth quite a bit already. Even before, when he dropped in, we talked quite a bit because, yeah, we seem to be thinking on the same lines. Nice. Yeah, the yesterday call was amazing. And he came back with even more visuals uh, for, for us to kind of digest. And surprisingly, it's so on point. I mean, surprisingly, just because he has been with us for two days, which is, which is crazy. But um, basically, to answer your question, I think there is something in this video call that answers it. Um, it kind of looks messy. Let me share my screen real quick. Uh, this is going to be so meta, like I'm going to be showing video within the video. 
but <laughs> basically, uh, how do I hide this? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so he tried to visualize this uh, flow chart that we have with people going through email, the website, getting some onboarding slides, then basically that routing of knowing which scale. Um, he again suggested the onboarding Slack channel with which I think we failed to introduce yeah. for a yeah. number of reasons that I've discussed in, in the video that I'm gonna upload. I have an idea how to solve it. I'm gonna try it later today. Uh, maybe me and Daniel will sync on that specific problem. But then uh, going to team coordinator as the ultimate uh, way to, to throw them in, in, the, in the actual tasks. So <coughs> the thing that we've discussed is actually like this seems to be working ideally for people that are like techy or even people that are not techy, like even MDs and physicians that are you know, willing enough and have enough time to figure out this whole thing in Slack and Trello and other things. But there is a big piece of SMEs that will most probably live outside of it. Yeah. And we need an, one central personable person that is able to bridge these via calls, via emails. Oh, subject matter experts. Oh, okay. Yeah, basically doctors, experts, and other people. Yeah, I think yeah, SNU is not clear. Yeah, virologists, not, anybody who's a, a full-on expert in something that's not the technical structure. Right, okay. Yeah. So, and I think that uh, that person could be Natalie. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe her commitment or time availability has changed, or maybe she was lost in the process of us figuring things out. We probably need to reach out to her and understand if she can, you know, come back. But she was that journalist that already works with medical professionals and could help us with that. <clears throat> so, yeah, sorry about this. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. There are so many other amazing things that I think will be highly beneficial to the communications team because essentially, even through the onboarding slides, we have to communicate some of these key pieces and, you know, communicate objections, first of all. And Actually, let me let me get back to sharing the screen because I feel you guys will benefit a lot from me showing some of it. Uh, but he did this amazing like quadrants of people. Uh, hold on. As you're as you're finding it, I'll just quickly say that. Um, Let's get some of the stuff, especially that you guys came up with yesterday on the call, to actually put into some of our documentation because his, his way of, of seeing what we're doing, synthesizing it into something that's really easy to understand and graphical is amazing. Yep, so he identified these kind of four quadrants that he saw of people wanting to help but can help, want to help, can help, and don't want to help, can help, and don't want to help, can help. It, it sounds confusing if you read or no, no. hear it. it no, it's but nice, but that makes sense. It makes sense. And like, basically it's all about focus and making sure we're focusing on the right people and the right intentions and building processes for that. So I'll let you explore that call after this one, but this is a crucial piece for us to understand. The other second piece is how the work is currently being done, which I think he captured so perfectly. And it was partially covered on the yesterday call with these vertical slash horizontal. He started drawing circles and lines. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and here he actually formalized that and presented it towards the different timelines that we're having. Because for right now, there is a reason why this exists. And at first he didn't get it, but through the call with me, he understood the benefits and then he realized why it's working. Kind of like brute forcing plus creativity enables us to move faster than if we would unbundle these individually. So yeah, it goes back to trying to be trying to fix something specific rather than fix three general things that are similar. The, the specificity it helps focus and then after the specificity have been built, you can see if you can adapt and use them in a broader exactly. sense. Exactly. And I mean, I've, I've explained that to him earlier because we were talking about it something. I was like, yeah, it's called in design thinking, it's called the paradox of specificity. It's the mm. idea that you need to make a really specific thing really well for a very single use case. 
if it's usable in other dimensions and other and that's kind of what we're trying to do with a background pipeline but you that's we're losing questions. you for, for a second sorry i'm a bit far away from the mic and i'm mumbling because it's night time it's one yeah, that's cool that, so. All right. So uh, basically communicating this, I think, is crucial within this mm -hmm. onboarding process because a lot of people actually uh, start asking, like, why exactly are we working on the four exactly same things in terms of NLP or four exact same things in terms of data set? And, you know, I jump in frequently to explain that, hey, redundancy is welcome for a reason. But obviously my messages are not good enough to communicate. And there are different stages that he explained in terms of, you know, the second deadline, the second submission may look like cherry picking different things from different um, tasks and establishing one. And then there is the next stage of actually identifying these, you know, uh, teams. But essentially what, what it is, is this chaotic emergence um, and I talked to this guy today about, like, I told him exactly what is happening right now and asked for his advice uh, because he managed big companies. And he told me that it sounds a lot like hives and like the ants uh, in basically there are, here's the analogy that he gave me. There are three types of ants or four types of ants, and there is no process or structure that defines uh, or tells them what to do, but it emerges by itself. So basically, when there are, when you kill all of the gatherer ants, they somehow communicate between each other randomly, and then they, they start becoming a gather, gatherers organically. And I feel this is exactly what is happening here because we're kind of like jumping from, from one, one team to the other one based on needs, and it's like, some for some unique form of hybrid between vertical and horizontal structures that actually doesn't exist in a typical work environment or research environment at all yeah yeah all right. i mean I, that's just i understand that sort of thinking because i am normally a very much a, i'll wear whatever hat is needed right now and even if I can't do it at the beginning, I'll be like, I'll work it out because someone needs to do it, even if it is, you know, picking up a shovel and, and moving sand. I'm not bothered if the, because I've always had the mentality of like, if in an in organization, everyone's got the same job, it's to make the organization achieve the thing it's trying to achieve. And I don't really care where I sit in the scenario of it and the amount of people who like divide and chop and go, well, that's not my job role. That's my job role. It's like, We've all got the same fucking job. Oh no, I just have a question with just the example of the um, this comment about duplicating efforts. I mean, just if we took the NLP for example, it's not really it's not really duplicating efforts no. if they they're slotted into the different teams and then there's this jumping that happens and like what, what you just talked about. It's uh, that's not, not duplicating efforts. It's not to you, but I promise you, it looks like duplicate effort on the low, like on the detail level, on the engineering level. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think one of the things Boom. that it's not for this submission, but probably for the next one, has been figuring out how do we how do we refine the ways that our redundancies are experiments that we're learning from, so that we can better pick and choose from the different the different sort of approaches that we're taking. One thing, just jumping back to the form piece for a second. Uh, one thing that's handy is if we decide to use something like a Google form for that piece of that join onboarding, it's possible for us to pipe in information from Google spreadsheets. So that way we can still have a unified spreadsheet where we keep track of things like who's the coordinator and what's the description for a given task. So that as those evolve, um, those can just get piped to, uh, to the form. Because it is one of the problems right now is that our orientation email and the, and the document are totally out of date. And that we're the kind of organization where three days stale is is totally it's uninformed. It's really bad. The <laughs> and yeah. the the funny joke that I uh, had, uh, funny saying that I had was Anton the other day is that um, it's really old by the merit of coronavirus years. That's right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It's the opposite of geologic ages. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so the join now on the website, is that a Google form? No, no, no. So I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the Google form is ideal for the collection of needs and this kind of like um, more of uh, pushing uh, way. Like obviously oh, okay. if, if you ask um, individual team coordinators what their needs are, they will tell you that, but they will never go to the spreadsheet and blah, blah, blah. So the easier way might be the, the Google form to collect that and then pipeline into sheets. Right, Daniel? That that, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's an awesome idea. What I had been thinking was more um, kind of from what Shannon and Frangis were talking about yesterday, that if we have some kind of a form, I don't think our current join form is a Google form, right? On, on the website? No, it's not. Uh, it's just a website form. Right. But if we have, if at some point early in the process of people getting onboarded, they were to have a Google form they go to, then we can have things like, you know, um, the, the list Frank Gies has been coming up with that sort of is that specialized set of tagging of what people's abilities are. We can okay, find so multi-layer um, skills or, or tags, right? Or, or do we just want to be really clean and simple and get them onto the channels? So well, I I the problem is, is the, go on, everyone's died then. I think the problem is, is we're kind of getting them to the channel, but then we have to kind of interview them individually. And if we can make them speed that process up a little bit by just going, well, I'm a designer or I'm a, uh, a data specialist, or if they can give a lot of that information, then they can be potentially sent to the right channel automatically. And uh, here's, here's hypothesis. Okay. And obviously, the more stuff we add to the form, the lower chances are the person will commit to it. And it's I less than 10 things. Yeah, I actually think the current form is working okay on a like 60% level. And that's enough for us to gather enough relevant people versus the current onboarding process working to like 5% capacity. And the top priority thing is to okay. fix, you know, the onboarding piece because we get so many people that list out NLP and other yeah. amazing skills, but they never reach the, the right people and right teams. Because if we fix that from five to let's say 50%, then we can go uh, to the top of the funnel and improve the form. Does it make sense? The onboarding form. Yeah. A, create an onboarding form. I mean, transform the current join form to be more extensive to get oh, more information. Okay. I believe yeah. that we're capturing yeah. enough information to cover most of the people and the needs. And like, yes. I rarely see people that don't fill out anything or are confused with stuff. It's like, if person didn't fill out any skills, most probably they're, they're not really committed to it. Sorry about that. All right, welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we were just talking about the potential of changing the onboarding and joining system to be more unified that it works effectively in a single run rather than the the join and then the onboard if we can make that be more in one one single run but not so laborious and complicated that no one even starts if they'll open up a form and it's five pages long and they have to, everyone else is going to be like nah i'm not going to bother with that that's too much <laughs> yeah and that's where i think those conditional parts might be really handy because we can make it so that people obviously to figure out the right order for those it's just like an expert system we figure out which are the things that are going to help us most quickly subdivide what the relevant information for people is and then we just in that process feed them the smallest amount of information that we get information from them and give the them the amount of questions yeah that they need to hop into the right places to then be talking to humans about about what it is that they're doing and to know how to do that because so, we, uh, go on sorry okay. no go ahead no no it's fine you go no i'm just thinking that that um so i'm manually trying to do this right now so if I, if I see, I, I see all the descriptions, I'm noticing where the people would be good fits, which channels, which teams. So I'm e going to email them. I'm emailing them to share that and encourage them to go on those channels. Right. And I think, I think but, that if we, but I have to tell them, remind them to go on general and say who they are like what tyler's saying like introduce yourself say it and i'm wondering if they should also the first time they join the channels that they're interested in 
they also do that. So would it be helpful for me to send you this complete version of the flow chart and just, um, I don't know, take five people that join and have you document what worked or what didn't and yes. specifically to this flow chart? Because yeah. I feel it's good enough for you to, mm -hmm. to start using it. Yeah. For some reason it's not showing the titles. Give me a second. Text on the... <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So person fills out a website form. Info is sent to Slack channel. Info is sent to database. Then there is, is person readily applicable to existing needs? If yes, if there is, it's, you know, for example, need for a security person. And we see that that person is joining us even before they join Slack, we should take on responsibility to onboard them, whatever mm -hmm. it takes. Uh, if not person joins Slack, we can check it by um, and contact by email from the database if needed. Um, but then, um, and this is basically assuming that we see a value and potential fit of, of the person. Like if we're not sure yet, I don't think we should bother that person until we have a need. So, and that's partially, you know, in, in relation to those hundreds of people that are not really, you know, participating, we shouldn't bother them unless there is a specific need. So then person introduces themselves. Uh, if yes, connector welcomes and suggests a couple of relevant channels. Uh, person finds relevant channel and team, team coordinator onboards this person. So I would actually say that connector welcomes and suggests a couple of relevant channels and point of contact. So. Mm -hmm. I, th I think when it comes to, I think when it comes to Slack channels, um, you can literally add people to channels. So it could be a case of rather than suggesting it, going like, I will add you on to A, B, and C. Yeah, maybe. Uh, the problem is, I think, is information overload. I've done it a couple of times. And from what I've seen, the conversion is higher if I prep them before dumping, you know, a ton of stuff that doesn't make sense yet. So, you know, messaging. I think that, got, I think that goes back to... Um, having the the onboarding having enough introductory information once the once you find what you know like like you said we've talked about having these slides it's like well if they're going into this team they're going to need to know this this and this and yeah. this is the most up-to-date piece of information for that team and that way we're not gonna have to they're not gonna have to look through potentially weeks and, or months of, of chat just to work out mm -hmm. what's useful and what's what's chat correct and I think, because um, I wanted to expand this and do relevant resources here too, uh, in terms of like overview of a team, you know, who does what, but then, because I was working with uh, Alessia on this, Alessia, and there was a, a good suggestion from hers. Like, I assure that Frangies or anyone else that it is gonna onboard them will have enough context what changed in the team, like who, who, who left the team or what's relevant anymore if they're using the correct data set. So I think it's really the responsibility of point of contact. And this could be the uh, team coordinator um, to basically take that person and make sure they have all the relevant resources, even if they don't have time to speak to them, at least that, and adding them to the channel with a package of resources like, hey, check out the latest uh, call today. Hey, check out this and that. At least I think it's worth experimenting and seeing if this funnel works. If no, if person doesn't introduce themselves, connector reaches out to make sure they introduce themselves. So this one is questionable for now. And you know, maybe we, we're, we shouldn't test this for simplification purposes. So if you can go through this and it's only like what, seven steps mm -hmm. and document it for five people, Let's see how it works out. And, you know, if it works for four people out of five, that's success. If it doesn't work for any, like we, we go back and iterate on this. And when, with the point of contact, is that, uh, what would that be? Would that be the, the actual Dan Sosa's coordinator mess messaging in Slack, his name, that would be a I think coordinator. message. I'm not sure how many coordinators we have right now. Um, like, do we have coordinator for vaccines team? 
See, this is also where it gets confusing because we're using the coordinator term to mean at least two distinct different things. Okay, so it's let's almost, call it yeah, the other way. Like, I had a good name for it, advisor. Right. So connect uh, the like onboarding coordinator is one job and advisor is the second one, which is really advising people in, on the team and kind of providing directions for people that join the team. It would be a, it'd be a team advisor and a and an overall coordinator. Yeah. yeah. So coordinators sit outside of an individual team. We might get sit inside a team as well, but for the most part, they're going to try and bring people. Um, I don't know. That's a well, good question. I'm going to try <laughs> and I'm going to try and make when I'm when I'm around. I'm going to try and make a point of onboarding a little bit more when I see people. If someone don't get it before me, because you know, obviously, I can't. No, it's just zombies. Um, I think. Is it? Uh, Andrew said he's going to be helping organize one of the teams as a advisor, so to speak. Well, and obviously, we've got two two team. We've got at least three team leaders or team advisors or head of, head of top you know, who are running the teams. I think at least yeah. three of the teams have got at least someone who's running or or coordinating within that that team. The magic is once you start onboarding these five people, you're going to learn who's the the team advisor yeah. very quickly. <laughs> okay. That's right. And one thing, if if you like right now, let's do a like this experiment with the five. If we tinker around, and if the the link between the spreadsheets and the initial form that we use for people to fill out can be what it looks like it can be, it could be a good way, especially as as our as our needs to onboard increases as more people start to come in. Um, it can sort of function a little bit like a sprinkler, where as those people are coming in, if we can keep it updated in terms of this, you know, if we have one sheet. It's a grid of all of the skills that Fringe's has kind of listed. And then we have on the other axis, here's the different teams that have identified I need that skill right now. Then all we have to do is, as soon as that's updated, it'll start to redirect people who are onboarding towards the teams that would need them. So again, that's, that's not immediately, but it's something to shoot for for maybe by the time we're working on second round, that may be a handy thing to do. We're, we're already at five, and there's a couple of other things that might be useful to, to mention. Is there anything else that people want to say as kind of final other action items on this one? Good. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, I think I think folks know, but uh, Rohan is done. So he's he has added the sponsor section, and what he's going to be doing, and he's going to need about a day to a day and a half to do it, is doing sort of a complete strip down and rebuild of the of the site. So he'll be doing that behind the scenes. We'll keep our, our current homepage up, um, but we can all maybe give some thought to what are the core sections that we need to have on there? How do we want that to be structured? Because um, the more we tell him and the sooner we tell him, uh, the easier that'll be for him to kind of, kind of work those pieces in. Um, on the Can we start a, a Google Doc or something? Yeah. Well, I don't think we, we have one that, that Anastasia started. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so we have that and we have it on a Trello board. Let's make sure that he's on that document um, and then we can use that, we can, we can extend that document to be for the overall website. So, so the site plan or architecture of the site, yeah? Exactly, yeah, and the content. Yeah. And Okay, yeah, just like, yeah, just trying to make sure that I'm understanding what you're asking. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Great, um, and then we, we are starting to have some of those little modular pieces. Um, we have the piece we've written for AI2, we have the piece Shannon wrote for Intel, and then I've written a piece for the CG studios. And so we can start looking at how we can start cutting and pasting and making templates from those for the different kinds of places we want to be approaching. Um, the other, I'm starting to do we, more link. Oh, go ahead. Do we, oh, I've got a free meeting, we'll end in 10 minutes. Uh, we're gonna have to re-up. Um, what are we, what are we needing technologically wise or like resource wise? Cause I'm seeing, I'm kind of hunting around for organizations that are offering up support in this form or support in that form or, you know, software or processing power right. or data scientists or whatever. I'm trying to work out yeah. where our actual gaps are so I can sort of help right. even if first, just highlight it for someone to be able to deal with it. For sure. The, the first one that's clearly yeah. well-defined is, is, uh, is having uh, Microsoft systems that can do power by. That's something that Mike, Mike Honey has identified and that we have a clear ask for. For all of the other ones, I'm really trying to, when the teams say we need more resources, to reflect back to them, like, you have to tell us what you need, the specifics of what you need so that we can ask for it. 
Because he's using Power BI, which is a business intelligence That's system. right. Yeah. yeah. Because um, I, a couple of days, well, a few days ago, I was on a call with a woman who was a CEO of a company called Pan Intelligence, which is, a, which is exactly that. It's a business intelligence analyst dashboard system. And she's basically wanting to, like, give it to anyone who's willing, who's using it, who's needing it. But I'm not sure if, as, as is AWS-based, but I'm not sure if it is with processing or if it is just the dashboard system. I don't know. Right. I haven't really looked into it yet. Okay, yeah, so we can find out some more, some more details that are there, and that would be great. And I also um, don't want to overload and make people re-look re for new things to relearn, because I'd rather just right. have one system. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for the, for the database guys who want to go with whatever it is that they're using. Archer, you had something? There is an increasing need for a person that will basically take our existing, like, general package and repurpose it for a specific company and specific channel. So to give you an example, I need someone to reach out to Zoom to uh, enable us the, the business account so I can get the transcriptions to, uh, to improve the, the knowledge preservation. Uh, the other stuff, I need someone to reach out to Lucidchart to, uh, again, enable us a free plan. Because I, the list of paid accounts that I'm adding on, on my card is obviously growing. So the sooner we have this person, the better. We have a lot of and that's already free, like Trello, Slack, and, and others. But yeah, we just need someone uh, to, to help. Well, I was looking at the fact that, because we're all using Zoom a lot, and Zoom's got its flaws. But Microsoft and Google are both offering very long business accounts for teams, especially teams who are dealing or looking at, at COVID specifically, especially because the small companies are needing it. But the, it might be something that we could reach out to just change over to a completely different platform and, and stick with if one. If it will be as seamless in terms of integrations, recording, and potential transcriptions, I think we can do it. But so far, like Zoom is, is perfect. We just need yeah. <laughs> to enable us uh, to do it without paying yeah. 200 bucks per, per month for business act. Totally. So I think, I think until we have a dedicated person and even once we have that person, um, what would be handy is any asks that we know we need to do, like one to Zoom, one to Lucid Chart. Um, we have a tagging system on the communications board. And for any of those, if you just put, um, if we put the name of the thing we need, why we need it, and then we tag that with the sponsor tag, then uh, that'll let the people who are kind of working on the, on the ground in communications move those, you know, anything we see that has that sponsor tag and has the details in it, we can move that forward as quickly as we can. Because we need it, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So e e even if you want to just start here after this call, if, if we want to, or if someone wants to in our channel, just list what the ones we talked about are. We you know we talked about, uh, about the upgrade to Zoom, uh, we talked about Lucid Chart. I, I'm actually adding that to the funding tracker that we have. Uh, which Perfect. can create it. So basically, whatever has a price right now on that list, we need to get rid of it. Yeah, <laughs> Obviously, perfect. priorities are, you know, whatever is more expensive, uh, the better. Yeah, We've got five minutes left, guys, before mine's going to drop, because I've only got a free account. All right. I think Perfect. we're good. Uh, I also, uh, in terms of communications, I've tried, uh, I, I am offloading, uh, got this feedback of a uh, class of tries indicating what I'm doing. So um, I'm offloading the daily calls to individual team coordinators. So I tried it with Yasan today, uh, seems to be working, gave him my Zoom account. And I think we're just gonna repurpose my Zoom account for all of these. And also gave him direction to upload a YouTube videos directly to YouTube, and I think I'm gonna create a separate YouTube a uh, separate Slack channel, private Slack channel for YouTube purposes. And whenever there is a YouTube video that someone uploads, it hits that channel, and basically someone has to pick it up and annotate and make sure it's uh, it's ready for consumption because YouTube wow, is nearly been doing yeah yeah YouTube is becoming an amazing vehicle for knowledge propagation. I mean saving a hundred of hours of catching up and s spreading the knowledge is huge. Uh, Timestamps are the best thing that we've done so far. Like people still keep replying to that email that I sent over uh, to the you know, conversation that we had here on the communication call. And they're saying, this is amazing. This is an inspiring. So the sooner 
we figure out a better process to kind of, you know, streamline all of these YouTube videos, the better. I still have, uh, oh, I completely forgot. So I, um, this guy uh, got introduced to me today and he's going to help us make podcasts. And I think this will be the place for like bullshit talk and like just discussing <laughs> vision and ideas and also a good way to introduce ourselves to more and more people. And I added Tyler to that board because he's the audio guy. So hopefully. Yeah, I, yeah. I used to make podcasts and I, I've been dealing with streamers for 10 years nearly now. So yeah, I used, to, I used to make video podcasts. So basically what we're doing right now, I used to do for two hours every week and I play D&D with some friends. I used to do that with streamers. And so, yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been doing, that's one of the reasons why I like stuff like this. Some people are like really weirded out by I'm like, I am past the point of caring about this. This is so normal to me now. Just having yeah. line conversations about everything and anything. It's just, it's just become a normal everyday thing for me now. I've just become... Completely, just completely absorbed in it. And once we have, I think one thing that would be good to do on that podcast note is, um, I was just talking to someone else who we might be, be um, going out to their podcast to kind of talk about what we're doing, is to just start a little bit of an online media list in addition to our normal press list so that we know what are the different groups we might want to be hitting. And so we can start scheduling so that we can say like, you know, here's some places for me to be, you know, you might want to be the, the perfect person for these. I might take these ones. And these, you might take these ones or Shannon. And just find the different people who have a sense of what we're doing, seem to be able to communicate what the, the key elements of it are, and then kind of recruit those people to, to help us on that outreach. Mm -hmm. Good idea. All right. Thanks, everyone. It was, a, it was a dense call. We got through a lot of stuff. So, so that's excellent. And we'll, uh, we'll talk with you all soon. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Take care. Yeah, cool. And Bye. Tyler, please upload the video to uh, to YouTube channel. Did I give you the credential or whatever access? No, no, no I'll give but it. I'm, I've, ne I've nearly finished finished tagging. I've got like last five minutes to do. I'm going to do that before I've got. Amazing. Bit. Thank you. All right. Okay. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.